Mini Shenanigans, episode 12. Hello there and welcome once again to Mini Shenanigans. With only three episodes left, I hope you've enjoyed the series so far and if you have, please feel free to tell us so on our Facebook or Instagram page. This week we've got another piece by Chicago-based playwright Dana Hall because, well, she's a fabulous playwright really. The piece for this episode is called The Long Goodbye and it's described best by a lovely quote from the front of the script. Those we love and lose are always connected by heartstrings to infinity. Theatrical Shenanigans presents The Long Goodbye by Dana Hall. Hey. How is he? Played his favorite song. You think he can hear it? They say the hearing's the last to go. I played a song I wrote for her. She'd always talk through it when I tried before. Nice sweater. Look at us both wearing green. Ten years and nothing from you. Then a random text. Well, you posted about your mom and... I'm okay. Okay. I wasn't before, but I am now. Good. Yeah. I'm not. Do you have a minute to sit? He stopped treatment a couple months ago, refused home hospice. I did what I could for him, but it never felt like enough. Her mind started to slip. Then the body caught up. How long? Maybe a few days. Family are on their way up. You? Soon. Family? Nah. Sold my place. Got something closer to the hospital and moved her in. Dad wouldn't leave his house. I'd drive back and forth a few times a day. I'd try and sit with him toward the end, but he'd shoo me off, tell me to go back to the kids. She was stubborn, too. They say towards the end they become more of who they were. Isn't that the truth? I was always doing it wrong. I half expect him to sit up and lecture me. When she came here, all she wanted to do was leave. Pulling on the IVs, trying to undress herself. She forgets she's sick. I'd try to tell her my voice precisa giso. They strapped her arms down. I'm sorry. It's been a long goodbye. Every day a new symptom. When she started to forget what things were, I'd put post-it notes all over the house. Then one day I came home and she was yelling at the paper for lying to her. She hasn't opened her eyes today. One of the nurses came by, told me just being here helps because... Dying is hard work. Every breath he takes. It's all I think of now. My brother wants to keep the IV in. Thinks it's cruel to take it out. Walking the line of hope and acceptance. Been there. So many trips here. Every time wondering if we'd go back home. I brought his glasses. I took her phone so she could call home. Have you had the cafeteria food? Yeah! Amazing, right? And so cheap! I'm glad you reached out. I didn't know where we stood with things after we broke up. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it's just you made it clear you didn't want to hear from me. Can we not... Oh! Remember that time we were supposed to take a road trip? Yeah. I was serious about it. So was I. You still... Never mind. What? Drinking. Oh, no. Though I'd be lying if I said that all this didn't make me think about it. Is that why you... You had a jealous streak when you drank. It was all great until... I was never good at knowing where that line was. Are you staying the night? Her breathing is changing. When I brought my oldest home, all I did was sit on the floor next to his crib. I fished my hand through the bars and I'd sleep with one hand on his chest. You're a good daughter. I know he was a difficult man. He was. But he was a great dad when I was a kid. Fishing, bike rides, movies, you name it. Some parents aren't so good at parenting when their kids grow up. I forgave her. Kind of started to see how her stuff influenced me as a kid. But uh, 
yeah. She didn't ask for it. But I did. You were always good to her. Thanks. These last few years, he got into politics. We did not see eye to eye. I even banned him from my house. But then he got his diagnosis, and I wanted to try again. I just don't understand how someone can be so close to the end and have hate in them. Try to hold on to the good. Second shift is coming on. I should... Yeah, I like to be there to update them, too. So what are you wearing tomorrow? (laughs) I don't know. I don't even like green. Must be fate. You believe in that? That there's something at work bigger than us? All I know is, many years ago, I was a goofy freshman sitting in the university library when I locked eyes with this beautiful upperclassman. (laughs) Only two years older than you. She looked at me and smiled. She even laughed at my jokes. We even tried to make it work a few times, but the timing never seemed right. Then... Then? I don't know. I don't think the story is over, my love. Oncology is two floors up from the ICU, if you need anything. Same. Meg. Yeah? Nothing. Well, thanks for answering my text. Wait. I'm sorry I didn't fight for you, for us. I don't want more time to go by without me saying that. You've got your life now, and I respect that, but when we come through all this, maybe we could talk. I hear they make fresh coffee in the cafeteria for the third shift workers. Yeah? Yeah. I'd like that. That was The Long Goodbye by Dana Hall, with Megan Bickle as Megan and Greg Bauhoff as Lewis. Theatrical Shenanigans part of an RFW Scripts production found on Spotify, Amazon Music, Podbean and anywhere else you can find your podcasts. Music is written and produced by Chris Cody.